Hiya, everyone. Are we staying sane despite the madness that is Omicron? I just got me out of quarantine myself after spending three days locked up in a room. And I mean, locked up is the right word. We couldn't leave our rooms and the elevators were locked too. So there was just nowhere to go. And I had my family in tow, but despite that, it was still kind of a very strange experience. Mentally, I felt trapped knowing that I could not leave even to go get a cup of coffee from right next door. Landing in Manila, I instantly felt like we were under siege with coast guards everywhere. Which, by the way, I'm loving those blue uniforms. So these coast guards were around and um, the enemy being the COVID virus, of course. And it was kind of, you know, surreal. It felt like I was in a movie. The holidays themselves were literally like dodging bullets on a daily basis. I felt like I was on an episode of Squid Games. I was afraid of getting a positive test result before I got on a flight or once I landed because that would pretty much the end of it. For the 10 days that I would be quarantined, you know, it would be like an anticlimax to spending a couple of great weeks on holiday in Dubai visiting my family. I was kind of nervous that if I couldn't get on the flight, then I couldn't get home. I was nervous when I landed in Manila and I couldn't get out of quarantine. I mean, it was a lot of, a lot of stress for a holiday. But I guess that's what this pandemic is for so many people. You feel like you're trapped, like you have no choice and you can't live your life because things are just out of your control. And I totally feel you, I can relate. But I also want to share with you that it is when we are trapped that we can truly find freedom. When there's nowhere to go, you simply have to learn to accept what it is and focus on what can be. While in quarantine, I remembered to appreciate the simple joys of life, like stepping out for coffee, taking a walk, clean sheets. I also got a chance to think about what I wanted to do as soon as I got out of quarantine. I even decided to get started on a bunch of things that I'd been putting off once I had a chance to finally get home. So I got the time to plan and assess the status quo to discover what else I could and would do. And so the lesson in this is to accept whatever challenge we have to face and appreciate it for what it gives us. Some time to think, quality moments with loved ones, bringing us closer to God or what we put our faith in, new resolve to make positive changes, to recognize and have gratitude for what we take for granted. And often it takes challenges like breakups, separation, financial loss, death of a loved one, failures, broken dreams, and most often illness to get us to the table. And once we find ourselves with a seat at that table of life-defining moments, we find ourselves at crossroads where we can change direction. We can course correct and perhaps even a do-over. We can recreate ourselves in a version that makes us proud. Which is exactly what happened to my guest today, Stephen Koo, who is known as a pioneer of the Philippine events industry. He is the founder of Eventscape Manila, a leading events agency that is quite the trailblazer in the marketing and digital media space, reaching markets across Asia. He currently serves as the founding president of LEAP, the League of Events and Activations Agencies of the Philippines. Co-founder of Worldwide Womb, Stephen and his team is behind some of the biggest concerts and music festivals in the Philippines, featuring headliners like Steve Aoki, Cascade, Tiesto, Swedish House Mafia, Avicii, Disclosure, Fatboy Slim, just to name a few. As a partner in some of Manila's biggest nightlife scenes, his crown jewels, the Palace Manila, which includes Zylo, Revel, and the Island PH, have consistently been, been in DJ Mag's top 100 clubs in the world. He's also a strong advocate of Philippine entrepreneurship. So without further ado, let me bring him on. Thank you for joining me on Project Loving Myself, Stephen. Hi, Sanaya. Hi, Stephen, and Hello. welcome. I'm uh, very honored to be here. Well, it is definitely my pleasure to be able to interview you on, on this episode. And I believe you have quite the story to tell. I do, I do, yes. Um, actually, it's funny that a lot of the stuff that you uh, mentioned in the intro right now, I still resonate with, but um, I've sort of um, gone on another path 
So, I guess I'm on a new journey and uh, there will be new things that I would like to attach to my name moving forward. But uh, that's what we dis- probably can discuss today. Yes, absolutely. In fact, I, I believe I'm sharing the person who everybody knows. But in this interview, we're going to talk a little bit about who you are today and who mm-hmm. you want to be um, in yeah. your future. So I'm actually really looking forward to kind of unraveling that with you today. Mm-hmm. So let's start a little bit at the beginning. Tell me about yourself. Um, I understand you were quite uh, the social person back in the day. As you know, your very impressive resume um, <laughs> as, as illustrates. Uh, so tell me about the person that you were. Let's start from that so we can kind of see the journey that you have traveled um, thus sure. far. Sure. Um, I'll give you a, a brief um, summary. So I was basically, I was born in Baguio City, one of the few people born in that city. And uh, when I was young, we moved to the we moved to Manila. My parents split up, but um, managed to go to La Salle, managed to uh, do well in La Salle. Ended up being student council president of La Salle at one point, and that's where I found myself um, as early as college. I was proud to say that I knew what I wanted to do. Uh, I wanted to be in marketing, communications, leadership. So I started one of the first few events companies in the Philippines if not like one of the three. So there was no industry back then. I started with a bunch of friends from the school. And what I, at the same time, I was singing professionally in a band called Fat Session. So that was how I was, um, in a way, helping myself get through college, helping my mom get me through college. So I was really, I was, I was struggling, uh, but I was having fun. So I realized as early as, you know, that time that, it's possible to be passionate about something and yet be productive. Um, and little did I know, I was already manifesting the future. Um, I had written things that I wanted to do in the future. Uh, and, you know, I looked at it like a few years after. And the 10 things that I listed, I accurately all achieved from financial uh, targets to businesses to everything to a lot of things like building a house and that's when my journey to nightlife started because uh, while I was in the band for six years I saw how nightlife was being done I was doing events I got my first big break from Louis Y who is my who's known as the king of Manila nightlife took me under his wing I started doing the nights biggest parties in the country you know the story I was engrossed in uh everything sex drugs and alcohol or you know every, <laughs> the I big mean, three the big three um but not so much in a way that i really wanted it it was more because i was there because it was part of the it's part of the scene not that i wanted it that's the thing so built a name for myself in events built a name for myself in nightlife and then uh, along the way, I did encounter a lot of turning points. And I believe in turning points. So I believe that I manifested this life. But it wasn't the life that I was meant to have. I don't know if you you get my flow. But yeah. So the relate. turning points that happen, you know, it, it, when I say turning points, people will have turning points in their life that will totally change who they are. And for me, it's, it's happened like maybe set two times or three this is my third now now what what I, what i'm going through now with my health issue is my third uh, but every time it happens i would i would it's as if i would totally be pushed to another path and you know my personality would change you wouldn't believe that back in college i was very i was very shy i i i mean shy in the sense that i couldn't even talk to girls and then here I am shoved into nightlife and events and I'm like talking to girls left and right. And I'm like, wow, you know, I realized I have this gift. And I thought, oh, wow, this, this is probably what I, I'm meant to do. And then now, fast forward, um, I recently, I was recently diagnosed with a very, very serious illness. Um, serious in the sense that it can cause death. And I'm still going through it. <clears throat> And it happened at a time when there was a pandemic. 
I, and I found out because I got COVID. So you can imagine the chain of events that led me to find out that I got a serious illness. I got COVID. I got an X-ray. And then I found out about my illness. So, and then a lot of other really, really um, not so good things happen. And it's so easy to say, uh, "Why me? Why me? What, what did I do?" Or um, you know, I hate this life. Or you know, blame God. But I found it in me to to find that that inner peace to say this is a blessing. So yeah, so maybe I'll, I'll I'll stop right there first so that you can maybe you know if you have any questions. But yes. essentially, what happened was uh, I'm now in chapter three of my life. Uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a new lease. I don't know how long the lease is, but but you know it's a lease. Amazing, you know, Stephen. You said that there was the why me. You know, there was a bit of the the blame, probably anger, probably there was a lot of different emotions you had to go through. And then you went on to talk about how you realized it was a blessing and how mm. these, you know, very strange events. I mean, from getting COVID to COVID being how you found out about your illness, which is now, you know, something you can actually, you know, work through. You can actually get the mm. right um, help and medication to kind of deal with it. So you see the blessing. But how did you get from that, you know, very probably dark space? Of initially yeah. finding out and struggling with, you know, having to deal with something that was not anticipated, not expected, and going to a place where you can now see the blessing in it, which is a lot easier from someone, you know, looking in on that situation. Yeah, yeah, very good question. Um, well, <clears throat> to be honest, a lot of us we live our lives thinking we're so lucky, we're happy, you know, we're we, we're rich, we're powerful, we have fame. And then you look at yourself and you realize you're not really happy. You're in a rat race. And that's what I didn't realize I was in. I was in a rat race. Yes, I was traveling. I was meeting people. I was partying. But I guess I wasn't happy. And if you believe, I mean, the matrix is so, is so, is so real. Because if you believe that you're living life, you're not until you take the red pill and for me the red pill was you know this this awakening uh you know the 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 threat of mortality because then you start to realize what am i doing what was i doing for the last 40 plus years if i was if i'm going to just leave this world in a heartbeat so that's when things started to change and that's why i said it's a blessing because It, it's like I was awakened overnight, overnight. And we're talking about not just not just your mind, but your body and your soul. Like I was literally, I had literally changed my perspective, my diet, my lifestyle, the way I, my, my faith in God, everything was shaken to its core. And, and for me, I'm like, When would that happen, right? And, and and a good friend of mine, Mark. His name is Mark Sung. He's a life coach. I don't know if you know him, but he put it really, really well when he said, "Why don't feel down, or why are you feeling down? Why are you feeling bad?" At one point, he said, "You have an advantage because you are able to assess your life right now and reconfigure it. Whereas the next Joe, you know, he can be." He thinks he's enjoying life. He's driving a fast car, a fast motorcycle. And the next thing you know, he smashes into a wall and he didn't have time to reassess his life. Yeah. So I'm like, oh yeah, that's a good perspective, right? Because we take for granted time. We think we have forever, but we don't. Everybody's going to end up there. It's just a matter of when. So there. So I hope, I hope I answered that question. Wow, Stephen, I have like goosebumps, especially the last couple of things you said, like literally, um, yeah. it's true. We're all going to get there. You know, there's an expiry date to all of our mm -hmm. lives. And hopefully we live lives that we, you know, when we leave, we look back and we, we are proud of the journey or we feel like it meant mm -hmm. something. We feel fulfilled in some way or we feel like we've contributed 
to the world. You know, we talk about carbon footprint, but I also think about sort of what kind of a footprint are we leaving in this yeah. world in terms of our, you know, the space we occupy, the energy that we took in this world. What did we give yeah. back? What are we leaving behind? And I think for someone, you know, at the age of 40 to be thinking about things, I mean, it is a second chance. It is a chance to kind of, that's why I said in the intro, it's like a do over. You know, you have enough time to could reconfigure you said configure yeah. your life you know in a way that it's something you are deliberately choosing to have mm -hmm. to be you know and i think that's the problem for many of us is that 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 our life is not intentional you know our life is just what it became you know Correct. where we kind of where we got pushed into or you know what other influences there were in our life they weren't necessarily our deliberate intentional choices of what we wanted and i know a lot of people i've talked to you know they they talk about what they wish they had or they talk about you know the relation the kind of relationship they wish they had the kind of job mm -hmm. the kind of career the kind of success and there's a lot of wistfulness and regret and there's a lot of pain yeah right 100%. but right but then then there are those people like you who get this chance to kind of wake up and say wait a minute i still have time to do it differently yeah i mean and I, I mean a lot of people a lot of people they're so busy trying to make money and they don't plan how to use it right i mean that's just a simple analogy and if we're talking about what you want to do in life is it about leaving a legacy? I mean, like, what's a legacy for? What does it do you for? What does it, you know, what does it benefit you to leave a legacy? You're going to be, you're going to be dead. Right. You're gone. But it, it's really more about how many lives you've touched, how many lives yeah. you've uh, helped, you know, how many people you've given comfort to. I think that's what's important because that's the human currency that, that, that maybe a lot of people, including me, didn't realize. And, and I'm working towards that. I'm not saying like right now I'm a saint, but I'm starting in my small, small little ways, like, you know, trying to bring people to God, trying to spread the news and awareness about um, the disease or, you know, um, you know, just spreading the, the awareness and educating people about, you know, living well. Um, you know, what, what do you do? to make sure that you don't get a disease and that you live your life fully. And a lot of emotional and mental things that uh, you should be doing um, to make sure that you are actually um, happy with life. So, yeah. You know, a lot of people though, Stephen, are not cut out for that, right? A lot of people are not, um, sort of, it's not in their nature they're not inclined towards necessarily wanting to give back or contribute. It's not for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. But what's very yeah. interesting to me is I find that a lot of people who, you know, they were partiers, they were drinkers, they were um, very social, they lived their life. Because I was a lot like that too. You know, mm -hmm. I used to live in New York City. I was quite the... Um, you know, the, the social butterfly at that time. I went to college there. I partied my life. You know, I, I just, love New York. I really, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, you get it. So, you know, I remember being, and I was a very selfish person, person back then too. So I remember being very different before I got into well being and, and coaching and healing. And it was like you have to go to the complete, you know, other side yeah. to realize this is not where you want to be. So you yeah, gotta it, kind of almost hit an extreme or rock bottom to wanna get to this point. It's uh it's basic synchronicity, right? Like the bad parts have to happen so that the, you appreciate the good parts. So you realize you need the good parts. People that live lives that are just, you know, moderate will never go extreme because they don't know what the extreme feels like. So I think that's that's essential. And when you mentioned a while ago that not everybody's cut out to help. I agree. I mean, like, I wasn't cut out to, like, really do great, a lot of, like, things that would help a lot of people. And and what I learned in, in reading the Word uh, is that you don't need to. One life that you touch, including yours, is well worth 
the effort already because it's not about the number it's about the effort and the the you mean because because we're all built differently right uh, and and if you read this book called the purpose driven life i couldn't read that book back then because i was like so engrossed with the material world that i couldn't get through chapter four because i couldn't do what they wanted the book wanted me to do right but when i when i got to the uh, got the diagnosis i was like breezing through the book until i got to a part where it says your mission in this world number one is to get to know the creator that's the most important thing because sometimes we look for our purpose not thinking that we don't even know the the, the that being who is giving us the purpose and yet we want to find our purpose that sounds weird right like it's like going to war and you don't know who the general is or the president is you're just gonna go to war and um the other thing is um i realized in that book that your mission is really based on your talent so god gave you talents god gave you skills like in your case it's communication in my case it's probably communication also in music we are doing what we need to do now we are where we are we need, we are where we need to be so when i when i found out about the the well, the, the disease this is i was thinking you know i want to do all these great things blah, blah, blah. and then you're like you know you're just 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 relax and be you are where you are, you're supposed to be and and then i guess i guess you know i'm i'm channeling my talents to really help people and if it reaches more people then good if not then that's what's important that you really tried to uh, work on that you know um stephen i believe in a concept called divine timing okay mm-hmm. and it's something i learned about from theta healing which is a type of um, a healing coaching technique um, that mm-hmm. i practice with my clients oh, yeah. okay so um i should, I should with- do it with you i did it once Well, you should, you know, it, yeah, it's yeah. very, definitely wi- very eye-opening for a lot of people. Mm. Now, um, this concept of divine timing is is such that, you know, each one of us here on this planet have a, a divine timing. So it's like something we are meant to do. And it's definitely mm. connected to the creator. It's something that we have sort of set up with the creator. Um, so very much the idea of God or, you know, what you put your faith in is involved in it. And the idea is some of us have a lot of divine timing. Some of us have one. But our divine timing has to do with what we've come here to do. Like why we are here on this planet. You know, what our life purpose yeah. is. And it, it's really in line with a lot of what you're saying. And it's about, yeah. you know, who we touch. And it could be that one little child you know, who goes on to make a huge difference in this world. It could be yeah. one person who is about to jump off a building and you said the right thing, you know, or it could be, you know, you're talking to thousands of people or you're on national television. So every person has something very specific mm. yeah. and they're meant to do it. And often it shows up. Um, and this is a little bit of, of my experience being thrown into the definition of divine timing is often it comes after an awakening. Yeah. And that awakening as I also mentioned comes through, you know, failure, divorce, broken dreams, marriages, yeah. you know, illness, etc. And it's it's like that very very difficult challenge puts us in the hot seat. It puts us in a tight mm-hmm. spot and we got to figure our way out. And as we climb out of that hole, we become whole. You know, we become the people that we were actually meant to be. Um mm-hmm. you know and and you talked a little bit about that and suddenly when we come into our being we are now the people who are um of the ability the resources the the energy the vibration to go out and carry out these divine timings so yeah. ultimately when we find our path or we find ourselves i believe there is some contribution there are some people or many or one um person that we will touch it's kind of inevitable but we have to go through those difficulties those challenges and mm-hmm. perhaps really being very honest with ourselves um to start that journey of well-being that you're talking about is yeah. this something you also relate to i'm 100% with you i mean i i do believe in the concept of karma reincarnation and all of these things right uh this you know despite conflicting views of like faith i believe in what i feel in my heart is true so 
I believe that uh, you know there's more than one life. I believe in eternity. I believe in God. I believe that we need to do good. All these things, right? And it's it's pretty generic across different faiths, like to do good and to do all of these things. That then you have purpose. And so, what I feel is that people should not wait for that awakening. And, and that's my purpose. I, I feel like it's part of my purpose. Like I, I start with my friends who are still pretty much in the circle. I'm like, don't wait for this thing to happen to you. You don't need it to happen to you, right? You don't need an illness. You don't need a divorce. We have that information and I'm sharing it with you now. It's hard because I always tell people, uh, you know, imagine yourself in my shoes And then that's like 500% still not accurate. Like it's it's you know it's not hard to be in my shoes, right? right? But but if you really really immerse yourself in what we're talking about right now, everybody should be doing it, right? COVID is already the biggest uh, awakening for everyone. Like you know, COVID right. is a blessing. I, I know it's shut down world economies, but it's brought. Families closer together. It's it's uh, it's brought people closer to their faith. It's uh, you know I mean it's a lot of benefits. Like I I can't even uh, you know go on. I can go on with the list. But if we focus on the bad things, then yeah, you'll feel bad. But I'm a very positive person, so I will always nitpick on the on the positive things that are happening um, over the bad things. And, and it's like and it's like your and it's like your body. Um, I learned this that when you are in pain, when you focus on the part of your body that's in pain, the more it will become painful, right? But if you focus on the other parts of your body that are not painful, that are you know you're breathing well, you know your eyes are are clear, then you start uh, you know you start digressing from the pain, and the pain starts yeah. fading away. And it's happened. I've done it. I I know it works. Well, that's actually the best example of being positive, right? I mean, what you're talking about is positivity. The more you are positive, the more you kind of bring yourself away from negativity and pain yeah. and suffering. And all you got to do is keep focusing on it. You got to keep feeling that way, and you got to keep kind of bringing up those feelings in yourself. And mm -hmm. you know, you will actually start to feel better. You will actually start to feel ha happier. You will mm -hmm. actually start to look at things from a more positive lens. Yeah. Um, so I, I totally agree with you on the, that. The challenge really is consistency, and and I struggle with it. Like uh, to heal, I believe in four pillars. That's uh, your lifestyle, your faith, your uh, your mind, and your emotions. Those are the four okay. pillars of of health. To to get over an illness, and if you just take medicine. It's not going to solve it because you are here because of years of lifestyle issues that you didn't address, like maybe your food, your sleep, your environment, and emotions. Uh, emotions, your body speaks your mind, right? Like you, you have disease because emotions have got gotten stuck in your body, and that emotion, since you were a child, just kept festering in parts of your body because of certain things like they say uh if it's your lungs it's sadness and grief if it's fear it's your gut you know i mean it's a lot of woo, -woo stuff but i truly believe in it because you can see it like when you're when you're scared where do you feel it you feel it in your gut right like your 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 stomach starts to like grumble so i don't believe yeah. that that the only sentient part of our body is our mind i think all the parts of our body have have um neuroplasticity or you know have uh are sentient that we the problem with us is we think we've forgotten the past and for us to heal we need to forget the past and live the future now i don't know if you've you've probably heard of this concept sanaya i mean there's yeah, a lot of sure. joe this the joe dispensa a lot of these people Correct. that 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 i you know i follow right now and it's so true but the problem is How do you live the future now, the future self that you want now? Because for you to to heal, you need to leave the past behind. If you still right. think of you know of all the hurt that you have in the past, you'll never heal, 
right? Because it's just stuck there in your body. So now you have to live the future as if it's a memory. Because when we're feeling that pain in the past, that co- that's that's uh, <clears throat> that's a memory. You know, like depression is a memory, right? Anxiety is the future, right? Because you're thinking of something that hasn't happened yet. So <clears throat> what you what you need to do is live the future self that you want, that you want to manifest. Like you're healthy, you're strong, you you're abundant, you you know you have a happy life. But you have to feel it now, like it's a memory, and that's the challenge for me because it's really hard. Yeah. I mean, how can you? How can you? I mean, like a memory is easy because it's already happened, right? Like, but to train your body and your mind to feel it now, what hasn't happened yet is is a problem. So that's the challenge for a lot of people who are manifesting a future life that they want because it, you you really need to feel it. Like you can't you can't ask the universe for it. You can't be like. Oh Lord, I want to be. Oh Lord, please heal me. You need to speak as if it's already happened. Lord, thank you for my healthy body. Thank you for my abundance. You know, that's how the universe works, right? When it comes to manifestation. Yeah. So Yeah, you you have to speak from a point where you've already accepted that it has yeah. happened. You've yes. already accepted that blessing. You've already accepted the gift, mm-hmm. which is thank you for this healthy body you've given me because I've now accepted it as my truth, as it's yes. real. It's actually happening. Even though in the physical reality, it hasn't mm-hmm. happened yet. But you need to convince your brain, your mind, that you're yeah. already there. And that's when you can bring it into your life. Yeah. And that's and that's the challenge with like the medical industry. Because the medical industry, they want to remind you that you're sick because they want you to buy their medicine. Right? I mean, like over, I mean, I don't know if we're going through a lot of topics that we shouldn't go to, but no, like, this is this is great. This is great. Like for me, that's essential that when you get diagnosed, when you find out about an illness, you just leave it behind and you be like, okay. I thank you, thank you for that information. But I learned this from my mentors that you should leave it behind and take back the power from the doctor and say, "But now I'm in control of my life. I want to be this person, not the person you say I am." So if the the doctor says you're sick, you're not gonna be like you know. That's why I love my doctor because the doc, my doctor didn't give me a timeline, didn't say, "Oh, you're gonna be dead in like X months or whatever." Right? He said like. Who knows? Like you know, the average that we give is a median. It's about, you know, an average of the people that die based on this particular illness, right? Are you a median? You shouldn't be a median. You shouldn't think like a median. So that's that's something I appreciated about my doctor. Um, and so, you shouldn't give the power to other people to dictate how long you're gonna live and how you're gonna live your life. Yeah. That's important. I, I can totally, um, I can totally understand the space you're coming from, Stephen. I think mm-hmm. that for a lot of people, um, it's very easy, by the way, um, for a lot of people to feel the negative emotion before yeah. something has happened, like the fear, or the anxiety, right, or yeah. the stress about something that could be. And we yeah. really kind of like we own that feeling, you know, it's, like it's our an entire. Easier- it's easy, it's, right? It's in a, it's an easier vibration. The lower vibrations for me are easier to feel because it's a lazy vibration. Correct, oh, I'll just, right? <laughs> I'll just follow my doctor. Oh yeah, he's right. Yeah, my yeah. friend is right, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Or like the whole like poor me or this is the end of it, you know, when people oh, yeah. spiral out and they're like, you know, I'm not even going to bother fighting. I'm not even I'm just going to give up. Yeah. Like that's the easy thing. Hey. I'll tell you what the reason is. Part of the reason, just to interject to what you're saying is, is a lot of media, especially in the Philippines, the victim mentality media. I mean, I'm I'm a communications graduate. So I know how movies and films are made in the Philippines. Everybody is a victim. You know, the movie starts off, there's a victim already. Like the wife is a victim. The maid is the victim. The poor person is a victim. Nobody can get out of their struggles because you will end up a victim. Right, and but that's, that's the whole colonial. Story. That's the yes. whole colonial history that has mm. kind of become part of the culture, right? Which is yes. we are victims, right? When you've been colonized, mm. you are a victim, and so I think the general population 
um, there is that energy of I'm just going to accept that I'm a victim and there's nothing I can mm. do about it. Yeah. Right. And Correct. so a lot of people just give into it and they just think this is this is it. You know, this is what my life is going to be. Or someone mm. told me that this is what I'm going to get. This is all I'm going to get and I'm just going to accept it. Yeah. Right. So how yeah. do you go from that to being like, wait, I'm going to live an entirely different reality. I'm going to choose an entirely different you know, ending for myself, or I'm going okay. to beat the odds. Like, how do you go from yeah. that? Because you're <clears throat> you're you're from here. You're a communications major. You understand this. How would you? Yeah. How would you break this down for someone listening? In? Um, you know, I I'm gonna admit there are days. I, I when people ask me how are you, I say like there are days that are there are ups and downs. There are good days and bad days. There are bad days because there are days that I'm like. Shh, Damn, I, I just, you know, I'm so tired of going to all the treatments and protocols. I just want to rest. And and if rest means I'm going to leave this world, you know, there, you, you get those thoughts, right? And I know it's like a bit dramatic, but then, I mean, it's serious. People going through serious illness have these thoughts. So you really need to power through. And one of the secrets, or I'll give you a couple of secrets that I try to do is really find a reason to live, right? And in, in my case, like for example, it's, It's a loved one. It's my fiance. It's it's a it's a future life I want to have with with kids that that I adore. You know I love kids. Um, you know it's 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 a future life I imagine I'm helping a lot of people and I can only I can only do that if I'm alive. So I, I visualize these things and, and they say visualize is not the right word. You shouldn't visualize it. You should feel it. Like you should uh, live it. Don't experience it. Experience it. In your mind, don't just visualize it. That's that's the right uh, that's the right statement, and that keeps me going. Uh, family, love, um, kindness, and then uh, a lot of it is also uh, centered on me being, I guess, an entrepreneur. That I'm like, oh no no no, this is not gonna beat me. I've gotten I've got I've gone through so much odds. I've started a company with zero money and it's it's thriving. I've started nightlife with no nobody knows who I am. I'm, I came from nowhere. I'm not even like from a, a a socialite family and yet I was able to you know do all these big events, parties, uh you know, memorable. And so for me it's that it, it's also that training that that helps me power through. And you just need to find that that your reason Right, so for some moms, it's the kids. You know, they want to make sure that they're 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 alive for their kids when they when, until they grow up. Yeah. So there, yeah. And of course, sorry, the most important thing is faith, faith, right. because you need to surrender. Uh, if you don't surrender and you try to take control, that's when you end up dead because you, you can't control. Um, you, only God knows how to make things right and. I know for a lot of people, they're like, no, God, God, God. But, you know, I, I can't explain it, but I just believe in it. I have faith. I have faith that the Lord above is in control of my life. And if it's my time, it's my time. If it's not, it's not. You know, I got a, <clears throat> excuse me, I got a couple of really great things from what you said. Um, I love the phrase power through, power yeah. through whatever you're going, you know, power mm -hmm. up. Um, I love that. And um, I definitely want to share that with our listeners. The other thing is, of course, faith being sort of the ingredient that makes all of this work. Yeah. Um, and I think we we really got that. We really got that from what you said. Um, but I also like what you said, which is find your reason. You mm. know, there's a reason that's going to get you through any difficulty in your life, any challenge, um, be it your kids, the person you love, you know, the contribution you want to make, your purpose, right? That's mm -hmm. all tied into the, that purpose. And I think these are some really great, um, great ways to kind of, um, I would say, focus on in terms of pushing yourself forward in any situation that you might be stuck in. Because I challenge your listeners out there, like when when you open a business, you have a mission, vision, you have, you know, objectives, goals, sales targets and everything, right? But have you done that to your life? Have you done something like that for your life? Because I'm gonna bet 90% have not. And the question is why not? Like, 
you're willing to do it for a company, but you're not willing to do it for your life. It doesn't make sense, right? Right. But that's mm-hmm. because, you know, we've been conditioned to think that making money is more important than the kind of person we are or, yeah. you know, relationships mm-hmm. or love. We've, we've been trained to think money is sort of the end goal for a lot of yeah. people. But even, but even with companies now, companies are more woke than, than humans because companies have social responsibilities now. Like some companies are social enterprises that they were built just to help people. Right? Right. But we don't do that for our lives. Like we just right. live our lives like robots, like people in the matrix, you know, yeah. and then one day we'll die. I know relatives that have just been working their whole lives, never took a vacation and died. And that's sad. That's very right? sad. That's sad. And I don't want that to happen to anybody. I, I, I think whether you're rich or you're not, you don't deserve to not experience this life because this is just a this is just a, a, a simulation of eternity right this is you have to make the most out of our life here we're now we're like avatars we're put in an we're like consciousness put in an avatar and we just have a finite amount of time in this world we need to experience it we cannot be robots that are just churning out money working and then and then what and then at the end of the day oh you're going to retire at 70 what how are you going to enjoy life at 70 right yeah yeah you know i i i was thinking as you were speaking stephen for a lot of people it, it's also this idea of responsibility yeah. and because of the responsibilities that they hold i think a lot of people feel trapped in love, those I love, responsibilities i love that you mentioned that okay go go ahead yeah right and yeah. so you know for someone who has to put food on the table or support their family um you know their their goal is to make enough money right to yeah to be able to do that to support their family and a lot i i'm putting myself in their place like someone who's in that situation and they're probably thinking or saying well i don't have the time to think about being a contribution a contribution to the world to contribute to anybody else because i yeah. can barely support myself or my family i can be- barely get through today right yeah, of so course. when you're in that space you know, how do how do you apply yeah. a lot of what we're talking about? But like, what it's do you good think? That you, it's good that you mentioned that. I wanted to touch on that. Um, yeah, I mean, like, it's not being insensitive to say somebody who can't afford to go on a vacation, but but you know what? Happiness is relative, right? Happiness is relative. Somebody can enjoy going to Paris, but somebody can enjoy just taking a walk by Manila Bay. That's happiness, right? But what I'm talking about is the quality of time that you spend experiencing it and working like there needs to be a perfect balance like even if you're working for your loved one you know there has to be some sort of balance because you're living your life you're not living just for somebody else and i think that's such a such a a a, a, a really really sad thought that you can't live your life because your life is dedicated just for somebody else and i and of course, we're not talking about people that are sick. Of course, you know, you have to take care of the people who are sick or old. But like, uh, as parents, for example, um, I believe that you bring your kids to a certain point in their lives where they can be, uh, they can have a life of their own. But some parents work their ass off because they need to support their kids until they're 40. Or, or older. And I think that's such a disservice for them because they could have retired earlier and enjoyed life, but because they have to work for their kids, you know, and that that's the, the, that's the kind of uh, responsibility that I think is not responsibility. I believe that we bring people into this world. We need to guide them, but they need to be responsible for their own lives. I don't know if you agree with me. Some people might be like, you know, be like violently objecting to this especially if you're living with your parents but you need to take responsibility for your own life because you know you can't like say oh you know i was i was born unlucky there's no such thing there's right. no such so thing I, guess, I, mean, yeah. mm-hmm. I guess what you're saying um and this is something that i i also resonate with um stephen i think what you're saying is that In some cases, people use the responsibilities as an excuse not to take ownership of their own life. 
Like I have to do this for other people. That's why I can't do this for myself. And that's not a good thing necessarily. It, it yeah. might be the intention is beautiful, which yes. is to support or help or do something for the people you love. But maybe underneath it, there is uh, maybe running away from kind of really doing something for yourself, which yeah. might be something people could discover or work on. Um, be because if you ahead. want to help, if you want to help other people, you want to be responsible for other people. You want to do it happy, right? You want you don't want to be like uh, supporting somebody and you're miserable, right? So the only way for that to happen is if you're happy with yourself. And how do you make yourself happy? You find the things that you have to love yourself first before you can love others, right? That's 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 how that's the saying, right? So that's what I'm saying. Like there needs to be a balance. If you're taking care of somebody, take care of yourself first. Now. Um, you know, uh, the concept of uh, responsibility is, is also very complex. Like, it, it's not a, you know, it's not a one, one cut action for everything. But uh, generally, that's how I feel. Yeah, I get it. I totally get it. I also think that even though we are responsible for many other things in our life, there is a way um, to find time for ourselves, whether it's in you know, taking care of our health, you know, eating yeah. well, exercising. Like there are yeah. some small things that we could do exactly. and commit to yes. that, you know, that, that are important. Um, and, and no matter how busy you are and how much responsibility you have, yes. there has to be a few things that you yes. do for yourself. And I like, you know, you talked about the four pillars, the mind, the emotions, our faith, and one mm -hmm. more thing. Uh, your mind, your body, your soul, and your faith. Your faith, yeah. And your body, right? Emotion, so, emotion. Emotion, emotion. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there must be some parts of our life that are dedicated to our well-being in these yes. four areas. And that's really what, you know, this podcast is about, right? It's about well-being. Mm -hmm. It's about self-love. And it's about yeah. finding that space in our lives that we can prioritize these these different aspects. Mm -hmm. Now tell me, Stephen, since you've done so, since you've been on this journey, right? What has changed? How is your life different? You know, what well, has come out of it? Well, I'm on sabbatical for all of my businesses. I run a bunch of companies, uh, like a lot of companies actually. But I'm on sabbatical because now I'm thinking like, you know, what are they worth if, you know, I'm dead? So, um, what has changed is my schedule. Uh, what I focus on right now is healing. And healing, part of healing is really getting to know your mind. So, I do a lot of meditation. I do a lot. I meditate every day for like an hour, two hours sometimes. I do a lot of uh, things that are good for my body. Like, I eat healthy. I'm plant-based, organic. Uh... You know, I've taken out a lot of the stuff that are toxic uh, to my body uh, from deodorants that are metals, toothpaste, shampoo. It's, it's a bit extreme in my case, but because, of course, I'm going through something. But also, I've taken out a lot of toxic people. That's important. You won't, you, you won't believe, but the first thing I did when I found out was I called and reached out to people that I've hurt, that are, have hurt me, and I apologized. Or I, for, or I forgave them, forgave them in my mind because forgiving, unlike apologizing, is for you. I mean, the difference, uh, just for your, your listeners, difference of apologizing and saying sorry is saying sorry, you need a response. You need the other person to say, okay, I forgive you. But forgiveness is you can forgive somebody in your mind and you release that negative energy attached to the other person and you don't need the response. Because you're doing it for yourself, for your peace of mind. And that has amazing powers. I, I mean, I can't explain what it is, but whatever progress I have in, in my, my illness, I would credit a big part of it to that, uh, releasing a lot of that motion. Um, I also do, I exercise, important for your body. Now I exercise more. Um, I try to take out negative thoughts. And uh, I'm focusing on my relationship, which is very important to me right now. 
I never really put any importance to relationships in the past, but now it's more relevant than ever to me. And uh, my passions. So there's music, uh, there's you know speaking like this, but uh, yeah, I mean like it's I'm I'm gonna start painting again, <laughs> you know stuff that would really like uh, I guess um, help my 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 inner inner system uh, be better. Yeah, it sounds beautiful. And I think this is this is the blessings you're talking about. Like every yeah. single one of these things that you listed is the blessing that has come out of, you know, having an illness to kind of wake you up. You know, yeah. this is the awakening that you've sort of realized and recognized that a life without all of this is not really worth much, right? That we mm-hmm. need to focus on the things that, you know, that make us feel good like relationships and and our hobbies our passions and Mm -hmm. you know feeling good like physically and mentally and emotionally and I think that maybe this episode we have is a reminder to people is you know don't wait for something bad to happen Uh to make these changes right like let's make these changes already like let's do it because it's good for our body it's good for our mental health it's good for our well-being And like you said, there's no greater time for awakening than right now with COVID, right? I mean, people are literally looking at death in the eye. I mean, less so now because of the vaccines, but there are a lot of people who, you know, have different positions on that. There are a lot of people who, um, you know, who have had COVID and it's been pretty bad. There are people living with long-term effects of COVID. So there are a lot of people who are actually dealing with sickness on mm-hmm. a daily basis at this point you know everyone yes. we know i mean i came back to manila and like pretty much everyone i know has someone or the other who's covid positive right now i think everybody's dealing with something whether it's covid yeah. or a relationship issue i think right. we all are dealing with something i i i you know i asked my fiance like do you know anybody who's happy super happy with no worries no cares in this world i said name me one of your friends and she couldn't like because i can't even and and again that's the point like you know it can be an illness for one but you're not to say oh i'm, I'm i have it worse because somebody can have it worse but for some right. other reason so it's really just uh, an appreciation of what you have in life and what are you gonna do to get over all of these challenges because these challenges are part of life and making you stronger uh yeah i mean ironically at the start of the pandemic i wrote a song called Kapit Lang. Uh, and it was written like maybe a week before the pandemic. It wasn't meant to be a pandemic song. Oh, and it was, wow. Uh, yeah, I wrote it with my good friend Top Suzara who, from Freestyle before. And mm-hmm. it was supposed to be about mental health because when we were writing it, we were like, oh, what are we going to talk about? I said, you know, I don't want to write about love songs again because I've read a lot of those. I just writes about something that's not being talked about. And I wrote Kapit Lang, and if you research the lyrics, if you if you have since you're on Spotify, guys, check out the song. The lyrics talk about not giving up and that there is uh, you know just hold on, Kapit Lang. But you know what? I found I didn't realize that a year after, exactly a year after, that song was a letter to myself because I I found out about the illness a year after. So I'm like, wow, I mean, the universe is really talking to you, right? Because you wrote a letter to yourself in a song a year before, and the song's still relevant now. So, uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how the universe works. Do you think that everything that happened in your life at the end of the day was leading you up to these life-defining moments? I mean, you talked about three chapters or turning points. Like it was almost so. like orchestrated in some way to get you to where you are today. Yeah, I believe so. Right? Because the situations alone are just, it's so coincidental that it's so weird not to be a plan. It looks like scenes in a movie. So, right. you know, from the song to COVID and then the, the diagnosis because of COVID. And like, you know, it's like, it's just so funny. And I, I recently I got COVID again and I'm okay, but... Yeah, it's like just blows left and right. And then yeah. it's like jabs, seeing if you're, you know, you, you can take it. And after a Are while, you still after, standing. Yeah, after a while, after getting 
jabbed and punched several times, you just realize, you know, it's just uh, it's just a match that you need to. It's part of the game, you know. You need to go through it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I I do think that our our life, you know, there's a divine plan. There is some something going on in there, and sometimes we take a step back and we kind of see where it's all been taking us. And that mm-hmm. I think helps us get a lot more clarity in, um, you know, in in why we're here and what we should do and what we could do um, with what we have left on, uh, you know, in this life. Definitely. So I, I think this has been a great wake up call um, for everyone listening in, Stephen. I think that um, yeah. your story is something uh, very, very inspiring to to yeah. all those people who are listening in. Um, now, Stephen, before we get to the end of our episode, um, I ask my guests uh, for their Project Loving Myself sort of message or mantra, something that helps you get through, you know, every day, something that is connected to self-love or inspires you, something that you can share with our listeners that has had helped you. Okay, well, I, I talked about the four pillars, right? So I encourage your listeners out there, to practice nurturing the four pillars with or without any illness, with or without any life tragedy, because these are the things that will get you through life uh, successfully or fulfilled. And um, we talk about the mind. So we know that the mind, uh, there's there's consciousness, consciousness behind the mind. The brain is not just an organ that, that thinks. There's a consciousness uh, that was put in there when we were born and it is very strong we have to believe that we are not just oh we're just human you know that saying we're just human that's that's such a um a fallacious cop statement. out because cop out because, it's a cop out yeah because even the research says like we have so much uh untapped potential and the mind starts with the mind so do a lot of meditation research on it joe dispensa for me is a good resource uh, I, I work with mentors like Master Del Pe from here in the Philippines um, because the mind can r- regulate your body. Uh, remember that, uh, that, that your body or your mind does not know reality in the reality that you're creating. Like, I, I don't know if I can explain that well, but, but basically if you, uh, if you feel strong, or if you, okay, so a good example is that they did a research Somebody who imagined that they were working out actually grew muscles, right? So that's I read just that an one. example. Yeah. Okay. And then emotions. Next, emotions is of course, you know, you need to uh, let go of all the pain from your past because even if you think you've forgiven people, sometimes you haven't, and that will affect you in the now. So let go of the past because there's no point. There's no point holding on to it. And the thing is, people are so addicted to pain without knowing it. We love that, you know, the, the, the wives that stick stick with their husbands because it's not that they're addicted to the pain, but they're addicted to the life of negative emotions. They don't know how to get out of it. They don't know who they are without it. You know, I mean, like, and that's, and that's, you know, it's like working, like working and you're, you're working like a horse. But you're so used to the stress that you don't want to get out of it. You know, that's an and, example. And you don't know how to live without it, yeah. right? You, yes. you have to kind of relearn or you, you got to almost start from scratch to understand yeah. what it is to live yeah. differently. Most yeah. people are stuck in that whole, you know, situation because they don't know there is a different yes. way to do it. And I'm not saying don't work because I believe people should work because it's if your passion is your work, then it's good. It, it right. drives you. But I'm talking about people that are working like robots, uh, like uh, like uh, conveyor machines. <clears throat> you know, you have to get out of that. You need to find work that you're passionate about, because if not, then you're gonna get sick, or you're in a you know heart attacks happen every Monday for a reason, because they're already thinking about their work on a Monday, right? Monday morning is when it happens, and then uh, okay, so that's emotion, and then your body. Is about lifestyle so you know if you're a car you're not gonna put like fuel that's dirty so why are you gonna eat food that's not healthy 
Why are you gonna put things in your body that has metal from mer- mercury amalgams in your teeth to deodorants that have aluminum, toothpaste that have fluoride? I mean, the, I can't, the list goes on, right? You know, cooking pans that have uh, these, these Teflon materials that like seep into your food. You know, that's just the tip of the iceberg. But take care of your body. And then the last is your faith, your, your, your soul. Because even if you take care of all the three things, if you don't believe in a higher power, if you don't believe in uh, a, a, somebody, some some entity out there that, that is in control of your life, then you or your ego will will get the best of you. Because you think you made all of this happen in your life? Do you think you created yourself? No. Something happened. Something we don't understand yet. And you just have to have faith. So yeah. I'm Christian. I'm not saying everybody's Christian. It's up to you guys. But uh, I I feel my faith drawn towards Christianity. But if you're not Christian, believe in something, a higher power. Uh, that's, that's, that's So that's my advice. The four pillars. I love it. You know, it's such a beautiful way, Stephen, to end this episode with the four pillars because it's essentially a summary. And probably, you know, I would say... Uh, in, in, a list of instructions that anyone can follow yeah. you know like if you want to just make some changes even if you pick one of them up from each of the pillars that you mentioned i think that's a huge huge uh <clears throat> you know positive change in your life so yeah. really thank you for sharing that stephen and thank you for you know how candid you've been in this uh conversation and everything you've shared i think it it goes a long way um, in in sort of helping everyone else who's kind of struggling with similar things. Yeah. So I, I hope I'm, you know I, I really hope our conversation does touch somebody because even with the song, I'll get messages on YouTube or on my DM saying, hey, you know your song, it it just it just alleviated you know, all these negative thoughts I was having, and I was like, wow, just one song, just listening to it on Spotify. So yeah, there is power in communication. So I really hope. We, we did something good today. And I'm sure we did. Thank you yeah. again, Stephen. Um, would you mind sharing your um, details on social media if people want to ask you any questions or write in or, you know, mm-hmm. talk to you? Uh, well, you know, I, I don't really post much nowadays because it's, it's, I guess it's part of the detox. But, of course, my music is out there. So if you want to follow my music, it's um, Stephen underscore Koo on Instagram. Uh, look for Stephen Koo on YouTube and uh, Facebook. I have a Facebook page for the artist profile. So just in case you want to hear about new songs coming out or collaborations I'm doing. I, I'm, I, I'm actually a big um, supporter and advocate of um, Hope Line, which is the suicide hotline uh, by the Natasha Goldburn Foundation. So I've actually donated my song, Kapit Lang, for their cause to help uh, reach more people because during this pandemic they've had an astronomical increase like i think 400 to 800 percent increase of callers from kids as young as seven years old you believe that so so yeah i mean i really uh hope you guys uh support hope line as well to help them with their funds and everything wonderful thank you again stephen and uh, i'm so glad we did this today thanks anaya See you soon. What a heartwarming conversation this was with Stephen. I think taking away the four pillars of health is something worth doing from this episode. Perhaps even journaling the steps you might want to take to uphold each of these four pillars. Share some of yours and tag at Project Loving Myself Podcast and at Sanaya Gurnamal with your thoughts. Subscribe to this podcast and drop me a like if this floats your boat. The quote that inspired me from this podcast is, it is not the length of life, but the depth of life. And that's by Ralph Waldo Emerson. So how deep will you go into the abyss of life? Are you ready to take that red pill? Take the journey with me. You are loved. Thank you for joining me on Project Loving Myself, brought to you by Podcast Network Asia and powered by Podmetrics. Bye-bye.